Hi there dreamers, welcome back to my channel. If I am a familiar face to you, please hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you here more often. I know a lot of you are not subscribed, but I would love to have you here. I thought what better video to bring you than Hoya pests. I have had Hoyas as a part of my plant collection for a little over a year and a half, and I have done pretty well when it comes to pests. I don't want to wish this upon myself, but I have been very fortunate to not have incredibly aggressive pests as part of my Hoya collection. If you don't want to wish it on yourself, don't say it! God! I just did a very overdue lack of flush. I'm having to completely reroot my Hoya lobii because the entire root system was horrifically infested with root mealybugs. Yeah, first experience with those. I will update you guys in a later video and let you know if that Hoya survived. Take it away, sweet summer child. The most obnoxious would definitely be fungus gnats. I'm pretty sure everyone with houseplants has experienced fungus gnats, and I will talk to you guys a little bit about my mediation methods as well, but I, basically I wanted to go over the different pests that have been associated with my keeping Hoyas in my care and how to kind of deal with them, how I've dealt with them. If you're interested in seeing what pests have been plaguing my Hoyas and how I deal with that, please leave me a like down below. That does help me out a lot. If you're looking for additional ways to contribute to my channel and help it grow, the best thing you can do is watch videos in their entirety. So watching a video all the way to the end is a huge help to me. If you can watch more than one video, that is a huge, huge help. Thank you so much in advance for all the support you guys give my channel. As I mentioned, fungus gnats are the most frequently talked about and probably most frequently acquired houseplant pest in general. And I will say my Hoyas have not been exempt from that. I think some people who have their Hoyas in maybe a different media, say maybe all their Hoyas are in semi-hydro, maybe you don't have fungus gnats. But as you may have noticed, standing water or accessible pools of water in your home will be frequented by fungus gnats, whether or not you intend them to. Fungus gnats do spend most of their lifetime in the soil. So while I do have a couple of sticky traps up, yellow thing over here. I do recommend those if the flying ones are getting in your way. They were bothering me, so I put them up so that hopefully that would take down the issue. It definitely helped. But the reality is fungus gnats spend the majority of their life cycle in the soil of the plants. So killing the adults is not really nipping the problem in the bud. But something you can do is purchase mosquito bits, which are available at local big box stores a lot of times. I get mine on Amazon, wherever makes the most sense for you. But what I like to do is put these in a gallon jug of water. I'll put like a quarter cup to a gallon roughly or a half a cup to a gallon. I like to let the mosquito bits soak in the water for, I mean, if it's hot water, it could be like 15 to 30 minutes until the water kind of cools down to a normal temperature. But if you're using room temperature water, I would say leave it for a couple hours if you can. I like to remove the mosquito bits. You don't have to do this. Some people actually put mosquito bits directly into the soil of their plants to keep fungus gnats from nesting there. The only reason why I don't like to do that is because the active enzymes of the mosquito bits are placed onto pieces of corn cob. That's what the actual like little chunks are. By soaking them, you get the active ingredients, but you dispose of the part that would decay and break down in the soil. When I have put actual mosquito bits into the soil of my plants, or I've let a few stay in the water and they've ended up in the soil, they break down and get moldy and kind of unattractive really, really quickly. And I'm not someone who enjoys seeing mold on my soil. You probably don't either. That's the reason why I remove the bits before utilizing this water to water my plants. It doesn't necessarily kill all of them right away, but if you do utilize this for your watering for a couple of weeks, I have seen basically my fungus gnats disappear. It's been a while since I treated my house plants with this treated water, so I am due to catch up on that. That's why I'm having a little rise in activity, but that is something that's really manageable. I think it's pretty straightforward to take care of, so it's not something that bothers me. <laughs> 
mealybugs are something that I avoided for quite some time. I was very fortunate to not have a problem with mealybugs until a handful of months ago. I started seeing them on one of my propagations and I couldn't find them anywhere else so I didn't know where they were coming from and then eventually <laughs> I found the source or what I thought was the source and it was my Dishidia million hearts which let me grab so we can have a visual aid. This is my Dishidia million hearts and this one definitely had mealybugs as you can see it's rather intricate. <laughs> it's not the easiest to go in and search for these things. Oh shoot, guess what? I found more. Well, I might see one mealybug, but I see fluff. So I know that there's more. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm gonna switch to my phone camera real quick because <laughs> I gotta kill these guys it's way too easy for them to come back on this plant because there are so many little nooks and crannies for them to hide, but I will show you. Do we see that little guy? Do we see that little gray white guy there on that leaf? That my friends is a mealybug. They're gross. They're pretty easy to eradicate as they are pretty slow, but <laughs> The reason why I knew he was there before I even saw him, he's kind of gray, so I didn't notice him as much at first. This plant does have just some like scarring and stuff. There are some white spots that are not mealybugs, and there are some dry parts that are not mealybugs. But that guy, that is a mealybug. And the reason I knew he was there before I saw him was because this fluffy stuff here. Do you see that? That is a mealybug nest. Put my Q-tip. It has 91% rubbing alcohol on it, and we are going to touch that guy. Kills him instantly. See how he turned dark? And try and get it off. There we go. One dead mealy. Let's get his nest. What's so ridiculous to me is that this plant I have found mealybugs on between five and eight different times. And each time it's only like one or two mealybugs. There's a lot of places to hide and I just went through the entire thing again. That's kind of been the case with mealybugs in my collection. They're not always an infestation and I'm really glad that I noticed them in small quantities first because now I keep a much closer eye on my Hoyas and I inspect them pretty closely on a very regular basis. I can see how it would easily get out of control and they could really do some damage to a plant. They try to find new growth and kind of take nutrients from it and eat the new growth. So it's damaging to your plant. Plants that I have found mealybugs on thus far in my collection. Uh, this Dishidia, Million Hearts, absolutely. My Hoya Crimson Princess had some. Senecio Macroglossus, or my Wax Ivy, suffered from mealybugs, probably the worst in my collection. I am still finding them periodically. Not too many mealybugs. They just are persistent, and I keep finding more. <laughs> my Hoya Pachyclata, I believe is what it is. I found a mealybug on that. I found one mealybug on my Dishidia Jerry or my Dishidia Green Cascade, which is the plant over in this far corner, which really freaked me out and I <laughs> immediately took it out of the hanger and went and hosed it down and sprayed it and stuff just because it's a pretty dense plant and I just didn't want to take any chances. I love that plant. <laughs> The last pest I want to talk about that I have dealt with on several occasions is scale. This one is, to me, one of the least scary pests that you can get simply because they're, they're not really mobile. You either have to kind of pry it off, either with like a fingernail, or I like to use the same method I use for mealybugs, which is the strong 91% alcohol on a cotton swab. You can also use a toothpick to kind of chip them off. but. Essentially, it's like a little bug that then encapsulates itself in place and then it tries to bore a hole into the leaf and gain nutrition that way. So like all pests, destructive to the plant. I have sprayed down plants after 
using this method to clean scale off of them. I have had scale on my Hoya Rigida. It was fully covering all of the leaves that I had at that point. Uh, it took a very long time, but I did clean it off. It only had a very minor recurrence of scale after that. I had a scale outbreak on my Hoya Skinneriana. Unfortunately, she is no longer with us. I think that one suffered from root rot. I think it got a little too dry in my move, and then when I watered it when we got here, it was just a slow death. That's what it looked like to me. But that one had pretty bad scale outbreak before the move, and so I did have to uh, remove scale one more time before all of that additional stress. Sadly, when I was removing the scale that time, it had this beautiful, fresh new leaf on my Hoya Skinneriana, and it broke off and I feel like that was the beginning of the end because I had had this plant for a very long time and that is the only growth it had done and it fell off while I was treating it for pests. And then the plant declined thereafter. I don't think it had to do with the scale, I think it had to do with the stress of transit and everything and potentially root rot. Let me know what pests you have had in your Hoya collection down below. If you have other methods that have really worked out for ridding yourself of them, for ridding your own collection of these pests, please let us know in that comment section. Let's start a dialogue. I love hearing from you guys and hearing about your experiences, so do tell. If you have not already, please click that like button. It helps me out so, so much, and uh, I hope to see you in my next video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you there. Bye.